CataractCoach.com. Dense cataract, small pupil, and MIGS. Challenging cataract case for this 87-year-old patient. Our guest surgeon is one of my favorite people to watch, and that's Dr. Val Apostolov from Amsterdam. So you can see there is the patient. He's going to put in a pupil expansion ring. Now, there are many different rings on the market, and I like to be able to show you all different kinds. So check this one out. It's going to go inside here. It's made of a plastic material, and it's really going to hook the pupil margin with these four points. There's one. There's two. Wow, Dr. Apostolov is slick. He got two points on just with the injector device. And then the other two have to be hooked too. Let's see, can he do a third one with the injector? No, he's going to use a second hand. Very nice. So this patient has a small pupil. Looks even a little bit fibronic. Doesn't look like this is a very reactive iris either. So I think in a case like this with so many challenges, getting that uh, pupil expanded is an important point. So there we go. There's uh, so two corners are in, in hooked. Let's see this two-handed technique. Oh, I like that, to expand the pupil with the other hand. Very slick. I learn a lot from watching these cataract coach videos. I love watching these surgeons from around the world. And here's the other one. And once you get these four corners of this ring hooked over the pupil margin, you can then center up the pupil to where you want it. Another center up that ring. So not, not quite, you gotta adjust a little bit more on this one. We're gonna show you this video because there's so much to be learned here. This again is a dense cataract, not only a small pupil, but dense cataract, elderly patient, weaker tissues, and we're gonna do a MIGS procedure here at the end. So now notice how he's pushing the ring over and getting it in the center where he wants it. And that's important so you can make your rexus very nicely centered as well. So doing the rexus here, he's zooming in, using a cyst home, getting this thing flipped over. And let's see, see all the wrinkling in the capsule bag? That's a lot of wrinkling. That means it's not great zonger support. You want that lens capsule to be very taut or tight, like the head of a drum, good tension on it. If it's really loose, that's a sign that you're gonna have weakened zonger support. So he's continuing the rexus here, just doing the whole thing with the cystome it looks like. And again, don't make a baby rexus. He's gonna make a beautiful five millimeter, five and a half millimeter rexus, definitely what you want. You need to be able to have sufficient access to this dense cataract. Do remember too, the lens nucleus does increase with size. As you get more nuclear sclerotic changes with time, it can increase in its actual dimensions. So now he's chopping in the bag and wow, that has some density to it. Got a good split there, propping it all the way through. Looks like he has a temporal incision, but is sitting superiorly. And then notice the angle between the phaco probe and the paracentesis side are about 120 degrees apart. Now the challenge here is you gotta operate within that small confine of the pupil expansion ring. And it looks like this patient's a high probe too, probably a shallower anterior chamber. And he's just taking his time, cleaning out the cataract, there you go. And notice how he can move the ring around to get better exposure in order to get all the cortex removed with the bimanual IA. So that's a very slick move, using the infusion hand to push the ring around to really get good access. Now here comes the IOL, gonna go right in the capsular bag. Looks like there was sufficient capsular support there and zoner support in order to do the cortex removal. Didn't look like the patient needed a capsular tension ring. So there's that lens going in the capsular bag and he'll just put it right into position. Looks like a single piece of acrylic lens, perhaps a Technus ZCB00. That looks good, opening up those haptics. And now you can see the pupil expansion ring is about a six millimeter ring. With that IOL inserted, you can see there's a little bit of sub-incisional cortex there. So he's moving the ring over to give a view of that. And he's gonna get out that cortex there at the bottom of your screen. And so it's just underneath that para, so he's gonna go in here by manual and get that last bit of cortex out. Important to get that cortex out because that superior cortex, if you leave it, it's gonna get fluffy and swollen overnight and then it'll drop into the visual axis. So he's taking all that out nice and easy. Good move. You definitely wanna keep all that cortex out. Also help minimize inflammation. Now be careful with all this manipulation of the pupil with that ring you wanna make sure that you're not going to damage the iris. So now, let's see what we got going on here. He's got a little break in the anterior capsular rim, so to prevent that from running out, he's gonna grab it and finish it off, bring it in. So very smart move here, because if you leave it, that edge could have run out to the posterior capsule. So here, he just turned that break into a little U-shape, 
and that's going to have better strength for the long term. So showing you his complications, that's the mark of a great surgeon, and even better, how beautifully he recovered. There's that last bit of cortex coming out. That looks fantastic. Now the ring needs to come out as well. Easier to do the ring removal if the eye is still full of viscoelastic, but be gentle here. Disengage it carefully. I do enjoy watching this two-handed technique. That looks like the best option. And then just carefully dialing it around. And once it's all completely free from the pupil margin and, and no longer engaged with the iris, it can easily be removed from the eye. So there it is. Now it's completely free. Now we still got to do the MIGS procedure. The MIGS procedure here is going to be very quick. In a patient like this, I think MIGS is a good choice, especially for an 87-year-old. And this patient had glaucoma that wasn't too uh, out of control. So the MIGS would be a nice touch here. So there's that ring. And then using the same injector that was placed in, just to hook it and then retract it back into the injector. And you can see you can hook it just about anywhere. Doesn't really make a difference. And this is a single-use device that will just be thrown away. So there it is, hooked, and then you can withdraw it into the the channel, and then when it's close enough, you can simply just uh, retract it from the eye. There it is. Throw that away. Now let's see the MIGS. Here's the MIGS. Looks like it's an eye stent inject, and going here to place these devices very appropriately. Nice view through that gonio mirror. There's one device, and here comes a second. Beautiful result for this patient. Thank you, Val, for sharing your videos. I enjoy watching them here. He's actually pushing on that to make sure it's all the way in. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.